So let's start from project and the project management because we talk about everything about project, project and project here in this workshop. So what is a project management? This is the definition which is taken from PM Bach and but what, let's understand the real meaning of this. Uh, there are two things which are bold here. One is temporary and the other is unique. So temporary means we are talking about something which is finite. It means a project has a definite start and definite end. So we are talking about that a target date by, by which we need to achieve our product, service or result which is unique. Unique in sense it has, it has not been done earlier. So like sometimes some confusing states, let's talk about some confusing situations like I have a product, I roll it out for one customer, I am rolling out the same product for the other customer. It's, is it a different project? Am I doing something unique here? If I am doing same activities for the other, for other customer? Yes, because it has the impacted, the stakeholders are different and which make this product unique because this product may be uh, if if this product is rolled out for the same people the same product is rolled out it is same but it is the, it is rolled out for the different people it is different for it is it is new for the new new set of people and therefore the stakeholders changes the product changes because they everybody perceive the product in a different manner so, if the impacted parties are different, the stakeholders are different, any product, any, uh, any feature of the products are different, the style of, of, of uh, delivering are different, then it becomes unique. It is not the same. Okay, so what we are talking about that achieving something achieving some some service some result or achieving if we have an objective which we want to achieve in a certain time period that is a project okay and now with this definition project just not like uh, uh, existing in office environment they are existing everywhere for a student passing an exam is in a project because he has to uh, he has to like pass this exam with good marks where that could be the like a metric for the uh, metric for the objectives to, uh, how much we are achieving those objectives in a in a certain time period okay you want to buy a house it could be a it could it is a project you want to build a house it's a project you go for anything achieve anything and if you are, if it is specific and need to be achieved in a certain time period it is a project and can all the project management principles can be applied on that now the question comes if something is not falling into definition what is that if something is not temporary or unique then what it could be what is that Anybody want to attempt this question? That if something which is not project, which is like either not unique or not temporary, not in, not to be achieved in certain period of certain period of time, what it should be? Should be operation. Should be operations, right? So there are operations. So basically, operations do not have any uh, uh, any any time fix for them they keep happening on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, so if I take an example of a simple water bottle if you come out with the water bottle first time a new design a new style and and you launch this this is a project like because you have come out with that I need to launch a new bottle of the water in certain time right but after you have got this first product done your first uh, first item is produced 
which is a prototype or which is a uh, which is a uh, which is sufficient for manufacturing it you transfer this to the operation team or the manufacturing team and then they produce this bottle again and again if you put these two bottles you cannot distinguish between these two bottles so that there is no uniqueness because user can come and pick up any bottle it is same but when you are launching the bottle first time it is different than the bottle which was existing in the market earlier and you can distinguish between them and the user will come may prefer to buy a new bottle instead of old bottle could be possible so something which is not coming unique second thing second thing is that it is not temporary means until unless you decide when you going to discontinue this bottle this kind of bottle you may continue producing this but the thing is that the question comes does it mean that project management principles are not applicable to operations what do you think it is applicable but not in a fully manner okay so but uh, like we are talking about the fundamental characteristic of the project is a temporary and unique but that's not none of these both of these things are not existing in this then how do you say that those principles will be applicable there as for definition that these two may not be covered the temporary and unique because the operation is just sustaining the uh, right but uh, you said that they are applicable and i agree with you basically they are applicable but in how they are applicable the question is that how they are applicable in operations what making them applicable there it is in a way part of operations the temporary uh, scale just the increment of it uh when you say incremental Project what do you mean inside the operations but it's a temporary increment of it part of okay so uh, when you say incremental what do you mean really uh time wise temporarily for uh, in the operations of that time increment it is the side product a product of it okay i think zera is reaching to yes. that point yeah yeah go ahead yet it is part of it it is a type of op uh, operation but it is the temporary and undertaken at that time within the operations it is part of operations right let me explain this way i think i think she's talking about something which is let, let me explain it this way that when things get into operation what actually happens it is not about just sustaining the operations it is about there is nothing called sustaining in the world as such you go upside or downside basically so what happens here is every year or every certain period you have some objective in the manufacturing also manufacturing is not without objectives and those objective have to be achieved in certain period of time for example uh, i want to increase my sale by 10% or 20% maybe next year i will increase our sale by 30% say 30% what does it mean your bottles will be continuously be produced we don't know when they are going to be uh, like ending there is no unique thing which going to produce but the thing is that the objective is changed objective is not producing the bottle the objective is to increase the production by 30% because of then only you can sell it so when you say increase the production by 30% your objective is changed your project is not about producing bottle the objective is increasing the production so what does it mean you have to uh, you have to add resources to sell it you have you have to add capacity 
you have to add resources, you have to have tracking of this project, are we moving into the direction and must be achieved before we start the new financial year. And therefore, all project management principles are applicable. Is that make sense? Yes. Right. And now let's move to the project management. We are talking about project management. This definition is taken from uh, uh, PM Bob, but this is little misleading in my opinion. Uh, that it says that anything applicable to knowledge, skills, tool, technique, to project activities to meet the project requirement. Now project requirements can be divided into two parts. One is technical, another is management. Now, project management does not include technical activities. So what are the tools technical activities? Technical activities like building an architecture. Suppose we are talking about constructing a building. So building an architecture of this building, creating an architecture or developing an architecture is not a management work. It's a pure technical work. You need to have an architect who will create the architecture of this. You are building a design. That's again a technical work. You are building walls, roofs, floors. None of them are actually project management. What is project management? If you want to build an architecture, who will create this? Building, bringing that resource is project management. Who will do this? That's a project management. When it will be done, that is project management. Right? What should be the quality of this? That is project management. What, who, who are the people? If, if, if the person who is, is the person who has come on board to build the architecture has those skills to build it or not? That is project management. If, there, if he is not, what is the skill gap? Measuring that skill gap is project management. Filling that skill gap is a project management, but actually creating architecture is not. Building, create, like uh, constructing a wall is not project management. Putting brick over the brick and, and constructing a wall is not project management. But who will do this? How many people are required? When is to be done? What is the quality of that? When it will be verified? When it will be delivered to the people? Who are the stakeholders? This is project management. Right? So, this definition looks to me a little misleading because, in my opinion, not all the activities, but the activities which control the technical activities are project management. Do you agree with this? Yes. So, so I think it this uh, this definition need a little improvement. But anyway, for for here this purpose that we are talking about the things which are controlling, planning, controlling the technical activities. <clears throat> the good part here is that, and important part I will say is that that these project management activities are only. 10 to 20 percent in the project. Only 10 to 20 percent because to construct a wall you need a huge number of labor. Number of, several number of people while for project management team you may need a two three people but for building architecture, designing, actual construction take much more resources than project management activities. And therefore, what happened that the most of the resources, most of the resources and most of the money consumed in technical activities. Money consumed in technical activities. Uh, Rajesh, you need to mute yourself. Okay, so 
these activities are only 10 to 20 percent so like you are controlling uh, you, you are planning for the project you are managing those projects you are controlling those projects they are not more than 10 to 20 percent if the if the project is new client is new uh, the environment is new you may need 20 or maybe 25 percent but if the client is old or the project is familiar or the environment is familiar then it is just maybe 10 percent not more than that or maybe less but, but the problem is that with the research with the various surveys have revealed that your 80 percent of the problem are there in this 20 percent the technical stuff which is 80 percent has only contribute not more than 20 percent of the problems most of the problems are management not technical the techno the management managers or the management problems actually convert the problem into technical matter let's let's take an example that you have built an architecture later you find this architecture is not suitable to build this kind of a structure we need to change it what do you say it is a technical problem or it's a management problem on a prima facie, yeah, if you look like on a, on a facade, it looks like a technical problem, but just go into the background. You might have recruited an architect who is not eligible enough. It's a management problem. If you cannot recruit a person who is skilled enough, it's a management issue. Even if you have recruited this person, but to understand that this person has the skill to deliver this kind of product that has to be measured by the manager so it's a management thing so if this might have not done either we have not recruited the right person fair enough in the in the industry it is very difficult to get people who are who are like equally uh, talented or more talented than what we need so we normally get less talented people but we can always measure the gap Maybe the project manager has not filled this gap and therefore the architecture which has come out is not what we were expecting. So though it looks like a technical problem but if you see the root cause is basically a management issue. Now because of that the whole project management need a lot of focus. The good part is, bad part is that most of the problems are there. The good part is that it is only 20%. So if we focus only on this 20%, I think we are all other technical matters will fall in line as such. So if we focus on this, this 20%, I think your project will be come out with the, uh, will deliver the product in much better way and in much finer product but the thing is that you need to control this 20 percent and this 20 percent is all about initiating a pro project planning a project executing it closing it monitoring and controlling it these are five stages in the project so if we have conceptualized better if we have good concept conceptualization is good see most of the problem let me tell you the problem is in conceptualization. What is a conceptualization? What we want to achieve. What we want to achieve in the project. Defining this very crystal clear is the biggest challenge. It is often not clearly defined and none of the project members really know what, in crystal clear manner what we are trying to achieve out of this project. This is very important. So you should have a clear objective which are measurable these objectives should be driven from a business case we should define a very good business case we should define our budget we should define our major milestones how we will travel this journey what are the major things we need to do these three four things if you did if you if you do properly it means you have conceptualization is good and if your conceptualization is good in a planning actually we are just 
expanding this conceptualization we are actually making it more crystal clear more dividing into smaller and smaller pieces and trying to understand in a more deep in, in more depth that is what planning is and then move to execution now the problem with the execution is that many people will plan the project because somebody has told them to plan the project not because they need a plan now what happens in this case if you develop the plan somebody will approve it but this plan will gather some dust in the some drawer or some almira but execution will happen through the mind because I am the expert I know how to do the execution I don't need a plan I prepared it because somebody asked me to do so if that is the approach we cannot control the project the 20% is out of our control altogether execution means implementing the plan is not ex just executing implementing the plan if something we have forgotten in putting up the plan it means we should go back to the plan add this activity into the plan and then execute it you look and I think we should learn uh, project managers should learn lot of things from accounting accounting people in the finance it is very very crystal clear until unless things are written they cannot be done and they are hard and fast many many times it gives us a lot of tough time but later we find that things are better the same thing we should do here first we have to write in the plan and then execute it and if that happens we can measure the gap deviation from the plan maybe because our because we are not champions so we have not planned uh, absolutely well nobody can do that or our course is not right in the monitoring we try to measure this gap and wherever the problem is we fix it by replanning the things and then again executing it now replanning is called controlling that is taking action to bridge the gap and then we move keep doing this till the time all deliverables are done and every time we see the variation variation the monitoring the gap there is an opportunity to document a lesson learned so every time we see there is a gap there is a deviation we document the lesson learned and in the closing process we do two things very important one is we consolidate all these lessons learned into one document so that our next project should be better than this project second thing is or not only our next project but other people should also learn from this project so it should be shared with other people in the organization and the second thing is transitioning transitioning the first bottle into manufacturing to manufacture the bottle again and again so transition to the manufacturing production maintenance all this now during this time from initiation to closer please type this down if you have a question at any point of time I keep speaking because it's more a theory part as such and I want to quickly move to the project uh, MS project but if you have any question please type this down into the chat box okay the voice is breaking I will be go a little slower then okay so from initiation to the closer we have to take care of each and everything which is which is you can see on the screen we have to manage our scope we have to manage our time we have to see our budget and the and this how we are spending are we on budget or not we have to manage our resources who are doing the job so a scope a scope means what we are doing time means when we are doing cost means and how much we are doing resource means who are doing the job. we need to take care of all these things plus we need to let every stakeholder know that what is happening in this project how we are progressing that communication is very important most of the problem in the project are due to communication they are not there but we create them because we don't communicate and we need to manage the quality of the project as well as the product if something need to be procured as a part of this project like in case of data centers so many things have to be procured 
and then need to be configured. Configured is a procurement is a big big thing in a data center kind of project. While in a software development, it would be a hardly any procurement. But if it has to be done, then we need to do this. And this is a subset of project. Basically, another project in your project. And the most important thing is the risk. We need to identify. We need to manage this. So because and you see in the middle there is a project integration. See every all these things have to happen in an integrated manner. And because of this, project management become little complex because so many things, so many dimension has to be taken care in an integrated manner. And project manager's primary responsibility was primary responsibility is to integrate all these aspects if you are a project manager managers try to delegate different different things or at least part of it to the different team members keep the integration with you see that everybody is going handshaking with each other and then moving forward and this makes project management little complex and to make this complex things little simple we have Microsoft project type of tools and what they will do they will do scope management time management cost management and resource management means the greener part the greener part can be completely managed using Microsoft project while Microsoft project will contribute in the in the ember part that is the communication so it will give you data but whom to give this data in what form that's not what ms project will do ms project will help you on quality on the project quality not on the product quality ms project will help you to manage the plan for the procurement but contracting etc is not what ms project can do but you can plan the whole project of procurement but in dealing with the vendors getting into the contract will not be now risk management is also a portion of that with respect to scope time cost and resources it may highlight some risk risk cut pertaining to the uh, critical path etc but other risk we need to identify so ms project is fully equipped to take resources while it will contribute you to manage the other four parts in an integrated manner and when we say scope time cost and the sources we're talking about this triple constraint and the ms project's real power is in balancing this triple constraint triangle that is the cost the scope and time if you are wondering where the resources are resources and cost are safe your cost is basically for the resources you, you money you use to procure resources that's all so cost and resources are same so we have cost we have scope we have time and you see that quality is middle and I normally ask this question with everyone and so ask you here also why the quality is in middle anybody white like to attempt this If we change any of this uh, three item, whether it is cost, scope, and time, we are going to compromise with the quality. Right. If anything happens, it will compromise the quality. But why it is embedded? It is a major factor because it's interacted with uh, uh, everything. Scope. With, uh, if you go with the scope, is uh, increase or decrease. Quality may uh, impact. Same way, it's because this is associated with all the three components directly associated with three components okay right but I would looking for some little more so maybe I will uh, ask maybe I will I expect some other people to add into this uh, these are three constraints which are impacting the quality yeah that's exactly so what Rajesh any, is saying yeah and any of them are compromised definitely there's an impact on the quality that's right, but uh, it could be an impact on other segments also, but uh, I am looking for some more justification why it is in the middle. 
not on the side. It has to be a complete balance with all these three parameters. One has to have a balanced view to ensure that the quality is delivered with these three parameters. Fair enough. I think uh, that's that's absolutely right. But I'm looking for something more. Anybody else? It is actually the center of every project. When you look at any project, you can complete a project with quality or without quality. When you look at a project which has completed as per the scope, in time, in the proper time, holding the cost together, you are getting the quality. So the quality is what is holding the scope, the time and the cost together. I'm sure this is exactly what the others also have said. Yeah. That should be the center of every project. You want to monitor quality of a project, you will automatically ensure that you are within scope. You will automatically ensure that you are doing it on the time frame that you have set it for and in the cost that has been given to you. That's right. You are absolutely right. This is the, These all are right things actually. But I looking for the question, my question is that why it is in the middle of this triangle? what this triangle represent, why the cost, scope and time are on side and not quality. And um, that's, if, yeah. Uh, this, uh, if uh, one of these uh, short in delivery, it affects the quality, quality suffers. Yeah, that is also right. But why, I am still looking for some answer. <laughs> Great, you can go ahead. Okay, <laughs> okay, I will. I will definitely go ahead with this. Okay, the thing is that what this triangle representing, the triangle is representing, is that if the scope changes, suppose, what do you do? You adjust the scope, balance this triangle by adjusting cost and time, right? Correct. You don't adjust quality when it is the time is a challenge then you try to adjust it through by adding more resources that is escalating the cost or reducing some scope you don't compromise quality if you have a challenge on cost you either see that reduce the scope or increase the time you don't negotiate the quality that's what oh, I'm trying to convey here is that the scope, cost and time are negotiable, not the quality. And that's why it is in the middle, because it's not negotiable. We don't negotiate this. But let me tell you, that's not a good idea all the time. There is nothing, one thing which is always be right. So here also, having quality in the middle always is not a good idea. So. If you see the challenge, if the thing here is that the quality is the top priority, top priority that therefore it is in the middle. Whatever is on top priority should come in the middle. That's what the message here. What is the other side which can come on the top priority? Have you seen something else come on the top priority instead of quality? many times the most frequent one other than quality which come on the top priority guess can we cost a time it is the time you see that Suppose let's talk about Olympics. The time is decided four years ago or it's say eight years ago basically. It's not negotiable. 
you cannot postpone that this date okay you have announced a bridge to be constructed and to be commissioned on a particular date the time become critical let me give you an example simple example which i normally quote microsoft has announced that windows 8 will come on 31st of october it's a commitment right time is critical time is on top priority because if we do not deliver this the reputation of the organization is on a stake mm -hmm. right at that time what do you do what do you do is that you put the time in middle and bring the quality out and you make say quality is negotiable so what microsoft's done has done or on or, or doing which is absolutely okay also for us also we have to take this this take this example uh, in a more holistic manner and should learn from this that time come in the middle then what they do when things are not done or they see some challenge with the time they will release the software but in three months or six months they will come out with a service pack now what the service pack contains some additional items scope and some fixes now quality which has come on this side means the quality is in a planned manner compromised they might have left some defects which may impact only a very small population so it, the software is still fulfill the need of the majority of the population right the features which are less important they are left out they may come up now sometime if the critical problem has occurred they give service back very fast also but that is how the quality is compromised on this so i am saying this triangle is not only about scope cost and time on site and quality in the middle this should be the normal case but you take your decision based on the priority on your project okay look at this this is what we have distributed or like uh, aligned the project ms project features with the project phases so we have initiation we learn how to set up the project how to create a new project what we need to take care when we do these two things okay we talk about planning we say creation of wbs entering estimates depend managing dependencies constraint assigning resources and then come out with a plan when plan is agreeable with all the stakeholders you go and execute it and when you are executing what do you do you gather the actual data from your team members and update those actuals and then compare actual versus plan and then adjust the schedule take corrective actions and keep reporting this to all the stakeholders in a format that the stakeholders want and when all are done we come to the closer part and try to learn something by evaluating our journey right so we'll take care about the reporting we we'll talk take care about the analyzing the gap take care about the actuals give out the planning and starting a project here.